Good day, Claymont families. My name is Tamara Stewart, and I am the proud principal of Claymont Elementary. Today, I want to share with you our back to school orientation. This is for families that uh, are new or may have missed our presentation. And this is for our students who are returning the hybrid motto. So we're going to take some time and walk through what our day is going to look like. We want you to know that coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And we want all of our families to know that our goal in all of this is to continue to work together with you and to collaborate. So we're going to review, you're going to get to know members of my administration team. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about a day at Claymont. We'll talk about scheduling and sanitizing and cleaning. And then at the end, when parents were here in person, they were able to do a classroom visit and do device distribution, which we will not be talking about in this PowerPoint, but I wanted you to know that that did occur. So members of my admin team, of course, I'm Tammy Stewart and I am the proud principal here. Just to remember that Claymont Elementary is home of Cougar Kindness, and we um, pride ourselves on being kind to all. So you'll hear us talk about that a lot. And during morning announcements, your child also uh, gets the opportunity to read a kindness quote. We want you to know that during this school year, like many others, we are all in this together. We understand your frustrations. We understand um, when technology doesn't work. So we want you to know that we are in this together. And we thank you in advance for your patience and your grace as we are bringing back students um, in person and still working with our students remotely. Members of my administration team consist of Mr. Christopher Romano. He is one of the assistant principals. Mr. Ed Burks, he's our dean of student. And Ms. Angela Williams, she is our assistant principal or another one of our assistant principals. We want you to know that our mission is to continue to provide excellent instruction and academic rigor, along with social emotional support to all students, whether our students are in person or remote learning. So that is our goal. We appreciate your patience again, as we are attempting to maneuver through uh, this new time period. We uh, miss our students very much and we are excited to learn new things. And again, we thank you for your support and collaboration. We're gonna talk a little bit about the school schedule, uh, but first just know that students who are returning to school, either in cohort one or cohort two, daily we're going to ask you to complete the BSD, BSD student health survey. We're gonna provide this on our website page or our Claymont website page. It is also on the Brandywine School District page. Um, we're gonna post it in Schoology and Class Dojo. So families that came for the orientation, they had an opportunity to complete this survey. It is a very quick survey, so thank you in advance for ensuring the safety of all children. We will say this and I'll reiterate this later. If your child is sick, we do ask that your child remains at home. So if it's allergy season for your child or they have a slight cold, please um, keep them home. And I'll talk a little bit later on why that's going to be important. Um, if you you could just email the teacher and say, my child's not feeling well. If they're able to work remotely, great. If not, then we understand. So this schedule was sent out to all families. Just know that the time is changing. Uh, some students were starting their day at 8.35 while others were starting at 9.20. Now all students will start their instructional day at 8.50. Um, and we will end around 2.30 to start dismissal. So we wanna make sure that parents understand that throughout the day, we will include movement breaks, mask break, breaks, and hand washing breaks. Um, so we wanna let you know that that will, occur, will be occurring. When our students are in hybrid, uh, these breaks, you can feel free to take them as they are important, um, but they won't necessarily have these breaks during their time at home. We want to also let you know or remind you that Wednesdays are asynchronous Wednesday. Uh, our students who are full remote, which would be our cohort three, will have some time with the teacher um, and they will be doing some synchronous reading and math. However, for our students who are hybrid in cohort one or two, their day will actually start at about 9.35 unless their teacher wants to meet with them on this day. And we will be providing SEL lessons. And then as you can see from the schedule, we'll be moving through all of their special. Our day is set to end on Wednesday at 12.05. Um, 
And we are doing this so one, that our kids can have a break, but two, um, in, when kids are in school, it allows us to have a deep cleaning of the classrooms. So that's the day that we'll be deep cleaning all of the classrooms to prepare for the next cohort. On the schedule, it does talk a little bit about uh, lunch recess at 12.05 to 105. We want you to feel free to do those after the 12.05 block. So as you are coming back to school, we want to talk a little bit about if you're late. We know that things happen on the way to school, so you may not get here till after 8.50. But remember, after that time, uh, your child is considered late or tardy. If you were at a doctor's appointment or something like that, we ask that you send in a note. You can email us the note. You can give your child the note. We do ask that you uh, have your child come to the, or uh, you escort your child into the lobby area with us. That helps us to just make sure that your child is safely getting in the building. At that point, our uh, administrative assistants will alert an admin and we will come and we will walk your child to class. Again, we are really about safety, so we want to make sure that kids are safely arriving to their destination. Early dismissal is similar. Um, we, I did forget to mention that in our lobby area, we are permitted to have up to four people. So if you arrive and there are four people in the lobby, please, you can wait in your car, you can wait outside until those four people come in and out. Again, we wanna be sure that we're following the CDC guidelines. When we're talking about early dismissal, uh, we will again ask you to come inside the lobby and wait. We want you to know that we do need to see your ID. We know we know a lot of families and you've been with us for a while or you could be new and we've gotten to know you. We still are gonna ask to see the ID. Um, if you could send us in a note, we, that would be great too. While we realize that emergencies happen as much as possible, if we can be notified in advance, that would be great. Once you arrive in our lobby, we will ask again to see your ID. Students will remain in their classroom until uh, you arrive. We know sometimes things happen on your way there. Uh, we wanna make sure that students are continuing to get instruction. And then once you arrive, we'll ask for your patience as we walk to get your child and we will deliver them to the lobby area. We do ask that you arrive no later than 2 p.m. to request an early dismissal. There is a lot going on as we get toward the end of the day. And again, we wanna make sure that everyone is being safe. We wanted to also let you know that we took a look at all of our entrance, our exits, um, arrival, dismissal, and recess. We have been working on this plan since about August, and um, we really have thought out the way that students will be coming into the building and the way that they will be leaving. So our arrival time, school students can begin to arrive at 8.30 a.m. Our bus riders and walkers will enter through our gym lobby area. Uh, we will dismiss them by buses. They'll be lined up six feet apart. They'll walk toward the main office and then they can either grab breakfast, which we have a grab and go, or they can proceed right to their class. Again, staff will be in the hallways monitoring, ensuring that students are keeping their, their distance. And for our car rider, our car rider entrance will be at the end of our second grade wing. So vehicles will enter and exit through the back parking lot. Now in the past, you were able to drive all the way around the back of the building. We are not going to have you do that. We're gonna have you loop the parking lot um, and then you can drop your child off there. We will be allowing six students in the building at a time. So again, we do ask for your patience as we are um, attempting to get everyone into the building safely and quickly. They also will have an opportunity to grab and go breakfast. If they don't want breakfast, they can go right to their classrooms. So here is just an illustration of our car rider line. You're gonna come into that back parking lot and instead of going behind the school, you're gonna turn where the cars are and come up to that second grade entrance. All classrooms uh, will be set up to enable uh, six feet of social distance within the classroom. So classrooms may have multiple desks, but only one student will be sitting at the desk. Uh, we do ask that students limit the items bought to school, such as their personal items. And at this time, we will also be asking students to bring in their Chromebooks and their charger. We do ask that you just have a conversation with your child just about how delicate the uh, device is. And our teachers will be working with our students. So as soon as they come in, we'll ask them to unpack their device and sit it on their desk. Um, again, it's going to be important that they bring those every day. 
We uh, went over the cafeteria protocols. Uh, students will be seated in one direction and six feet apart in our cafeteria. So if you are looking at the picture, you will see that three students will be seated at the long tables and two students at our round tables. We know that we can have 52, 52 students able to eat within the cafeteria. And as we add uh, more groups of students, we will be utilizing our gymnasium where 35 students will be able to eat. We also have built in cleaning time in between those lunches. I'll talk a little bit later about the cleaning solution that we use that kills uh, germs in COVID-19. It does take about 10 minutes to dry, so we built in that time also. Our cafeteria staff will walk through both locations, so that's our gym and our cafeteria, and they will provide the student with two choices for lunch, either a hot lunch or a cold lunch. And please note that your child can always pack their lunch. Uh, students will also be able to remove their masks during this time period. We do understand that students have not worn masks for this amount of time. So not only during lunch and recess will we have mask breaks, but we will build them in throughout the day. Students will have approximately 30 minutes of recess daily. Our goal is always 30 minutes. We understand that some kids eat a little faster and a little slower than others, but we want to ensure that they have uh, access to recess. They will be provided hand sanitizer before and after they leave the areas. Uh, we also have a very large field, so students will be able to rotate through the field, through the playground area, and on the blacktop. During those days where the, we have inclement weather, students will also be able to engage in activities within their classroom. So briefly, I just wanted to talk about our nurse um, and what her procedures will be. So in the past, when students weren't feeling well, especially our older students, our, they were able to walk to the nurse with the pass. Our younger students were provided an escort. At this time, we are asking that all of our teachers contact the nurse first before sending students um, down to her. We wanna make sure that the area is, is clear, um, and that we don't have any students that are in our isolation rooms, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, once the nurse gives the okay, students will be permitted to come to the nurse um, and they will be uh, escorted by an administrator or a, or a staff member. Again, we wanna make sure that students are being safe in what they're doing. We want to ensure the hallways are as clear as possible. Within the nurse's room, you will find uh, six feet uh, markers will be placed on the floor um, within Claymont. If you did not get to do the orientation, you will see that we have six feet reminders on the floor. We also will be gaining some arrows that we can put along the wall just to remind students and staff about the direction they should be going. Chairs will also be placed six feet apart within the nurse's office to ensure social distancing. As I stated before, we will have some isolation spaces for students or staff at this point who experience symptoms of COVID-19. Earlier in the presentation, we talked about if your child is ill to keep them home. We are not able to diagnose COVID-19, but we are able to recognize some of the symptoms. So if your child naturally has allergies or just isn't feeling well, this is the reason why we asked you to um, have them stay home and if they can do it remotely, fine. Um, once a student is placed in the isolation room because they might uh, be experiencing some symptoms of COVID. Before they return, you have to have a doctor's note. So we, are want to, we want to ensure that all kids are safe. So in order to do that, unfortunately, if your child has some of those symptoms, we are going to ask um, you to pick them up. Um, so please make sure your emergency card is up to date if you are bringing your child for our cohorts. And then before they return, we will need a note saying that they are COVID free. So if you have questions about any of that, please reach out to uh, Nurse Gandolfo. Her name is Sharon Gandolfo, Sharon.Gandolfo. Within this uh, presentation, uh, I'm sharing a positive test or COVID-19 exposure. I will also be attaching a 31 page document that just talks about the return to school during COVID. We wanted parents to know what we were doing to ensure the safety of students. If it is um, determined that a student has tested positive or has symptoms, we will alert you. Part of what our nurse's job is to do, um, she has to do contact tracing. So that means we have to figure out who the child was around and then we contact those parents. That's why it's so important for us during lunch, we're gonna know where kids were seated. 
uh, during recess. We're going to know which kids they were playing with, uh, who they were exposed to. So then we will contact you. While we're not trying to cause you anxiety or, and we're definitely not trying to make you afraid, we want to make sure that you are informed. So we are very transparent about what is happening. We won't keep things from you. We want you to know what's happening because we want not only to keep your child safe, but your family safe and our staff here safe too. If your child requires daily treatments and medication, there will be scheduled times for your child to come to the nurse to receive that medication. Again, I will be putting in a link uh, for a um, information booklet about returning to school during COVID. And then if your child is coming to school, again, please submit your emergency card. So a lot of questions has been asked about how are we going to keep kids safe? So what are our health and safety protocols? So hand sanitizer is placed at the end of each hallway and in each classroom. Um, six floor markers will be placed in every hallway where staff and students will be traveling. Our main office has shields that are placed at both reception areas. Uh, right now, we're not having visitors in our building as we want to ensure uh, the safety of our kids as far as the virus is concerned. Um, but when we are permitted to do that, again, health surveys have to be taken, uh, masks have to be worn. So we will be sanitizing and disinfecting our high touch point surfaces every 15 minutes to two hours. So one of the uh, discussions that we have is that we have targeted entrances and exits for our kids. Because Claymont is such a large school, we want to ensure those that the students and staff are entering through one door so that we can make sure that it's thoroughly clean and exiting through another. Um, and that way we know what areas have been um, most used and we can clean those immediately and then follow through and clean the other areas. Just so that you are aware, we are using Enviro Care Neutral Disinfectant as our primary disinfectant and it has been approved to uh, kill COVID-19. We want you to know that all student desks will be clean and disinfected prior to the start of the school day and after they've left for the day. We also will be cleaning and disinfecting their desks while they're at lunch or recess. And if they're rotating between classrooms, we're going to clean those too. We do have a electrostatic disinfected sprayer uh, that will be used to get those hard to reach places. Within our building, we also have a communication system between our custodians and our teachers. So walking through the building, uh, our families that visited were able to see yellow and blue signs. So the yellow sign just says ready for cleaning. And that is for our custodians to see that the classrooms have been used and that they're ready to be cleaned. This helps us really target classrooms that are in use. We didn't, while our custodians will be cleaning all rooms, we know that the rooms that have staff and students in, in them really need to be sanitized and disinfected. So um, once they put that sign up, our custodians come through, they clean and sanitize the room and they put the date. This is a checks and balance for us to ensure that the rooms have been cleaned. If a teacher comes in the next day and unfortunately that room was missed, then she knows she needs to contact the office or our chief custodian and we will make sure that that room gets clean. So it ensures that everything is happening the way it is supposed to. This is one of the machines that we uh, have purchased. Actually, we have five of these. Um, our administration team will be using these to miss classrooms, to miss the lunchroom. Um, so if you happen to call us in the middle of the day, we're going to apologize because we are going to be doing a lot of different things. We are going to be cleaning classrooms, cleaning cafeterias. Uh, again, we want to ensure that we are providing the best environment for our staff and for our students. So we just want to make you aware we are not ignoring you. We apologize, but while your children are here, we want to make sure that we are keeping them healthy and safe. We have bathrooms in our kindergarten classroom, so they will be able to use those um, for hand washing breaks and of course to go to the restroom. We will be scheduling times for other students to go. So our first through fifth grade students will have a scheduled time that they're able to go to the restroom. Now we do recognize that just because we created a schedule for um, students doesn't mean that their bladder will always agree. So we will have uh, other people circulating around to be able to escort those students to the bathrooms. Uh, we will make sure that those bathrooms are clean so that as students enter and exit, they will have um, a clean facility. 
along with that staff will be uh, along the hallways helping to guide and remind students about six feet social distancing, remind them about their masks, remind them to walk, all of those normal things that um, happen in the, in the day. At dismissal, our bus riders and walkers will exit through our old office area door. So if you're familiar with Claymont, we had an entrance when you first pulled into the parking lot. That's where our students were exit and that's our targeted exit place. Again, we're going to, um, instead of dismissing by grade levels where our teachers would walk students around the bus loop, we're actually going to dismiss by bus. So our teachers will hear the announcements. They will um, identify those students on that bus. For example, all students on bus two. Staff members will be in the hallway ready to walk those students to their bus. We'll make sure that they're on their bus and then we'll do the next bus. We also will be dealing with walkers in a similar way. We will call for all walkers to be dismissed. They will be walked out of those doors uh, where they will meet you um, and be able to go home. Again, we, as we stated, we've really mapped out the way that we want kids to enter and exit the buildings. Um, we also will be reminding our walkers that use the crosswalk uh, where that's at and the correct way to cross. For our car riders, again, we're in that back parking lot. We will have students placed along the second grade hallway six feet apart. So kids will be spread out along that whole hallway. In the past, students um, that were car riders met in the cafeteria, but as I stated earlier, we know that we can only have 52 students in the cafeteria. So utilizing that space at this time would not be beneficial. We know that we can have uh, multiple students aligned on both sides of the hallway facing the same direction, upstairs and downstairs. Uh, we will ask for your patience as some of our students will just be remembering their number, remembering their number and their name, or some may be distracted. We promise that car rider will get quicker um, as our students get more familiar with the routine. So again, thank you for your patience and grace as we are trying to figure all of this out. We will be staggering students as they leave the building. Again, here's an example of our car rider. Instead of going to the back of the building, you will be coming around the parking lot. And as a quick reminder, I just wanted to go over the dress code for those students who are returning in person. The biggest change in our dress code has been that kids now can wear leggings, jeggings, and joggers or sweatpants. <laughs> um, but we ask that there's no denim um, or no jeans. So as long as their bottoms are solid color and not jeans or denim, they are fine. And of course, our shirts, we ask that they are being a solid color with a collar. Um, so those are the, though the major change was just the um, addition of the joggers, the jeggings, the leggings, anything but the jeans um, will be there. The rest of our um, dress code is pretty much the same as it has been in the past. Um, and it is also on our website. So families, I thank you so much for joining me for this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to email myself, Nurse Gandolfo, or any member of my administration team. We thank you all for entrusting us with your children as we work together to ensure their academic and social emotional growth. Have a great day.